arteries of the anterior abdominal wall. The arteries of the anterior abdominal wall are divided according to the level of the umbilicus into arteries above the level of the umbilicus and the arteries below the level of the umbilicus. The arteries above the level of the umbilicus first of all terminal branches of this artery. What is this artery which will uh, be studied in the thorax? This artery is artery runs inside the thoracic cage posterior to the upper six costal cartilage and because this artery inside the thorax it is called internal thoracic artery. The internal thoracic artery which uh, runs lateral to the lateral border of the sternum deep to the upper six costal cartilage and behind the six costal cartilage by dividing into superior epigastric artery. Why uh, call this artery superior? Because there is the same artery below the umbilicus, also epigastric. Therefore, it is called inferior epigastric, and the upper one is called superior epigastric. And both arteries are called epigastric because the runs in this direction, in this region, which is called the epigastric region. Therefore, two arteries, one from above and one from below, therefore superior and the inferior. And the both runs in the direction of this region, which is called the epigastric region. Therefore, the artery above the umbilicus is called superior epigastric artery and the artery below the umbilicus will be called inferior epigastric artery. The internal thoracic artery gives superior epigastric and this artery which runs with the costal margin, parallel to the costal margin. Artery called musculophrenic artery. First of all, superior epigastric. The superior epigastric uh, pass behind the seventh costal cartilage. This is the seventh costal cartilage. To enter this sheath, which is sure, the rectus sheath. It enters the rectus sheath, runs between the posterior of the rectus sheath and the rectus abdominis, which is removed here. Therefore, it runs between the posterior of the rectus sheath and the rectus abdominis muscle. To end at the level of the umbilicus by anastomosis with the inferior epigastric artery. The next artery, which is a terminal branch of internal thoracic, is this artery, which is called musculo because it gives muscular branches to the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall and to the diaphragm. And because it gives the branches to the diaphragm, which is phrenic. Phrenic means diaphragm. Therefore, artery gives the muscular branches to the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall and to the muscles of the thoracic wall. Therefore, it is called the musculo. And it gives the branches to the diaphragm. Therefore, it is called the phrenic. Therefore, this artery is called the musculophrenic artery. Um, number two. Above the level of the umbilicus are these arteries. What are these arteries? These arteries are the lower five posterior intercostal arteries and the subcostal artery. Lower 5 intercostal from 7 to 11. 7, 8, 9, 8, 9, 10 intercostal and 11. And the last intercostal is called the subcostal nerve uh, and the artery. Therefore, the lower 5 intercostal 
posterior intercostal arteries and the subcostal artery. Um, this arteries runs from lateral to medial to enter the rectus sheath between the posterior of the rectus sheath and anterior to them are the rectus abdominis muscle. These are the arteries above the level of the umbilicus, superior epigastric and musculofilling, two terminal branches of internal thoracic, and the lower five intercostal and subcostal arteries, lower five posterior intercostal and subcostal arteries, which runs in the neuromuscular plane to enter the rectus sheath between the posterior of the rectus sheath and the rectus abdominis. Um, arteries below the umbilicus. First of all, superficial arteries. Superficial arteries. These are the superficial arteries. Superficial epigastric artery. Superficial epigastric artery. And this lateral branch, which is called superficial circumflex iliac. In anatomy, circumflex means turn around. For the Arabic student, بيلف على حاجة. فأي عندنا artery أو nerve بيلف على حاجة يتبقى circumflex. Therefore, this is called superficial circumflex iliac because it turns around the iliac crest. And both are branches from this artery, which is the artery of the front of the thigh, femoral. Therefore, two superficial branches from femoral, superficial epigastric and superficial circumflex iliac. There are deep branches. Deep branches from the deep artery here in the abdomen, which continue as femoral artery. What is the artery deep here in the abdomen and continue as femoral? This artery, which is external iliac artery. The external iliac artery gives the inferior epigastric artery. The inferior epigastric artery runs upward and medial, both in front of this curved line, which is the lower end of the posterior wall of the rectus sheath, which is called arcuate line. It passes in front of the arcuate line to enter the rectus sheath between the posterior wall of the rectus sheath and the muscle removed here, which is rectus abdominis muscle. To end at the level of the umbilicus by anastomosis with superior epigastric. The inferior epigastric artery is very important. The inferior epigastric artery arises from the external iliac, both upward and medially enter the rectus sheath. When the inferior epigastric pass laterally, uh, above, upward and medially, lateral to it, what is this? This opening in the fascia transversalis. What is this view? This view is come and sit here inside my abdomen and look to the anterior abdominal wall. Actually, this view is posterior surface, posterior surface of the anterior abdominal wall. And the posterior surface of the anterior abdominal wall is lined by this gray colored fascia. This fascia is the fascia transversalis. And the opening here in the fascia transversalis is the internal inguinal ring. The internal inguinal ring is the lateral to the inferior epigastric. This is very important. Why? There is a famous hernia passing here through the internal inguinal ring called 
oblique inguinal hernia or indirect inguinal hernia. And the diagnosis of this hernia is very simple. It is the hernia passing lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. The inferior epigastric uh, artery uh, gives the branches. What are the branches of uh, inferior epigastric? This artery which enters the internal ring to supply, to supply muscle inside the inguinal canal called cremasteric muscle. Artery supplies the cremasteric muscle. Should be named cremasteric artery. And this cremasteric artery supplies the cremasteric muscle and end by anastomosis with testicular artery. Inferior gastric artery gives biopic branch, which anastomosis with the biopic branch of this artery. Artery passing in the obturator foramen. Therefore, sure, this artery is the obturator artery. And normally, the obturator branch of inferior gastric anastomosis with the obturator branch of uh, with, the infi uh, with the biopic branch of obturator and this anastomosis occur behind this ligament which is called lacunar ligament in about 30 percent of population the obturator artery is absent and sure the biopic branch of obturator absent what replacing the normal obturator artery in this case the biopic branch of inferior epigastric becomes very large and descend downward to pass into the obturator foramen as abnormal obturator artery what is the importance of this the importance of this is this opening is called the femoral ring and here pass a famous hernia called femoral hernia during the operation of femoral hernia we divide this ligament which is called the lacunar ligament if uh, the abnormal obturator artery which is large artery divided here this lead to massive hemorrhage during operation of femoral hernia um, this is the inferior epigastric artery and its two branches biopic branch and cremasteric artery the external iliac artery also give this artery which is called deep inside the abdomen not superficial in subcutaneous tissue like this artery this artery in subcutaneous tissue passing laterally and the curve around the iliac crest therefore it's called superficial epigastric why is this superficial because the same artery arises from external iliac and the passing lateral and the curve around the inner lip of iliac crest therefore this artery which is deep called the deep circumflex iliac the deep circumflex iliac gives muscular branches to the muscles of the abdominal wall and it gives anastomotic branches Anastomotic branches to anastomose with the arteries at the anterior superior iliac spine and gives the ascending branch which anastomose with the musculophrenic and lumbar arteries. Um, this is the arteries below the level of the umbilicus branches from external iliac deep inferior epigastric and deep circumflex iliac and two superficial branches 
from femoral superficial epigastric and superficial circumflex iliac. Anastomosis in the abdominal wall. There is lateral anastomosis. Lateral anastomosis here between the ascending branch of deep circumflex iliac and the lumbar arteries and the musculofrenic. And there is a medial anastomosis in the rectus sheath between inferior and superior epigastric arteries. This lateral and medial anastomosis very, very important to establish a collateral circulation if the external iliac or common iliac is obstructed. If the, the common iliac or external iliac is obstructed, this uh, anastomosis will be a pathway for passage of blood from above the obstruction to below the obstruction to supply the lower limb. These are the arterial supply of the anterior abdominal wall. Thank you for good listening and good luck.